This is Alex, and welcome to Barely Braided, where we're taking a deep, deep dive into foster care, adoption, and all things parenting, even the sticky stuff. Well, that's ironic because I'm always right. Welcome to another exhilarating, thrilling, refreshing episode. Riveting. Of, riveting episode of Joel and Alex try not to get annoyed by the animals on a Friday night at almost 8 p.m. Mountain. And it's already happened, so. Yes, it is episode a lot. 111,000 of Barely Braided Podcast, and we're glad you're here. Glad to have you. Welcome back. It's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that was my radio voice. That's funny. Did you know my high school job? I was a radio DJ. At Corn Country, K-O-R-N Mitchell. No, it wasn't called Corn Country. What was it? It was just hot, no, Hot Country, K-M-I-T. And Cool don't, 98. Don't they have a station there called Corn Country? I don't. I think, think it's so. KORN. They have KORN, but I don't think they call it Corn Country. Yeah, which is weird because out here in the Black Hills, the Fox affiliate is Kevin. Who's Kevin? I don't know. K E V N. And they're like, they call it K E V N instead of Kevin. I would call it Kevin. Kevin, you're such a disease. <laughs> I would give it, I would like personify Kevin. Yeah. Like Kevin would be a thing, a personality. Yeah. So we are officially Deadwood, South Dakota residents. We live here. We play here. We work here. We, we die here. We will probably die here maybe tomorrow. Yeah. It's uh, it's taken some adjustment, but for you more than me. Yeah. You've kind of seemed like you've really loved it since the second we got here. And yeah. I'm really happy for you. I'm really glad you're liking your job and you're liking the community. And, you know, this is kind of your cup of tea. I have had more trouble adjusting. What is it that you find most difficult in the transition? You know, I've had to think about it because at first I wasn't exactly sure. Part of it, I really miss the community that we had in Nashville. And so like I'm just picturing myself waking up in the morning in Nashville. We would get the kids ready. You would take them to daycare. And I just remember walking out the front door and going for a nice walk or a nice run around the neighborhood. I would see neighbors out and about, and that felt so good. Like I just loved those moments. I also really loved on the weekends, I could take the kids to the playground, which was like a block and a, block a, half, and a away. half next to the pool. Uh huh. I could drop them off at drop in daycare if I needed something to do. I just yeah. felt like all of our things were so convenient. There was like a million things, the things to do. We, yeah, the things we got used to and took for granted there. Yeah, like you get Amazon in one day. You could get Amazon most things that same day. And everybody, don't get us wrong. These are first world problems that. But you, you know, get used to them. You do. So like here, it takes us like seven days to get an Amazon package. Mm -hmm. And also, I think a big part of it is I still don't really get a lot of adult interaction. Yeah. So it's like I work from home, you know, and of course I talk to people like occasionally. But other than that, I'm taking care of kids. Whereas in Nashville, like on a Saturday or Sunday, if I wanted to, I could go hang out with one of my friends. We could go shopping with or without kids, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I don't really have that adult interaction here yet. And so <laughs> we've made friends here. Yeah. We're meeting people. It's not like but we're hermits. Here, here's the problem. All the people we meet aren't from here. They're visiting. This town is 1200 people. Yes. Yeah, so and that probably includes is. me, you, your mom, Tom. <laughs> That's like 1100, 900. 11, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so we went out the other day and we met a very nice couple from Casper, Wyoming. We all four of us got along. I really enjoyed spending time with yeah. them. But they go back to Casper. You yeah. know, just today at the park, we met a family. It was parents with three kids and from Mitchell, from my hometown. And the funny thing was, is I started talking to the gal first and. The gal. The gal. That's a South Dakota word. And I said. <laughs> the folks. The folks. And I said, uh, I asked where she was from. She's like, oh, we're from over by Mitchell. And I said, oh, my wife's from Mitchell. She's like, she looks really familiar. I think she was in my dance class when we were little. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, so I pulled That's when you know you're in a small, small area. And that's still like four hours away. Yeah, well, and it gets really bad too because the woman who watches our kids, our daycare provider, is literally related to the entire town. Yeah, we're. I took Brooks to his three-year. Yeah, you, I just said three-year. Yeah, he's three. That kid's three-year well checkup. And uh, I was talking to the, I think she's a physician's assistant or a nurse practitioner. And she said something to the effect of, do they stay home or do they go to daycare? And I said, oh, they go to Miss Corliss's house. And she's like, oh, Miss Corliss is my cousin. Yeah. And Miss Corliss's sister runs the dog grooming business here in in town so it's and i was asking around for babysitters and one woman recommended this girl this teenage girl Mm -hmm. and so i texted the teenage girl and i sent a picture of the kids and i said hey i have these kids i'm looking for a babysitter on this day you came highly recommended she said yeah i help out with miss corliss i love them both and is also related. <laughs> She's like, I already know your kids. Oh, yeah. they're uh, It's Corliss's niece, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. They're literally all related. <clears throat> and it's, it's kind of cool, I think. But also, it's kind of scary at the same time because, like, you never know who's going to say what and how they're connected. And yeah. Everybody knows your business. And I don't like that. Yeah. You know, I haven't, I haven't noticed that yet. Even, well, I guess, yes, I have noticed that. Um, I went on a fire call the other day. Joel is a volunteer firefighter, by the way. I don't think yeah. we've said that, have we? Uh, I don't know. It's very interesting. We can get back to that. But anyway, let me, before I forget this, I didn't tell anybody at the fire station that I was leaving town last weekend. Um, kind of left unexpectedly due to uh, a death in the family. And uh, I got back and went on a fire call. And, and as we were going to the call... Uh, our, one of our captains said, hey, I'm sorry to hear about your aunt. What? And I'm like, Frenchie, how do you know who my aunt is? Or what? Like, I said, did you stop at my store or something? And he's like, he's like, well, uh, at the concert the other day, I put my chair right in front of your store so I could watch the Sawyer Brown concert. And uh, while I was waiting for the concert to start, I walked in to see if you were in there. And they, they told me that you were gone to a funeral. Yeah, everybody yeah, knows everything. I have that was the only time I've really noticed anything yet. I've definitely noticed it. Well, and then there's other craziness happening too. So, for example, let's talk about this Facebook marketplace thing, and I have a few things to say about <laughs> this. First of all, attention, PSA South Dakotans. Learn how to use Facebook Marketplace. You really need to up your Facebook Marketplace game, okay? Because I have listed several items for free. And this isn't junk. These are like nice things. Like we have some stuff we used to sell on Amazon that had been returned to us, but still like new in box stuff, like a lamp, a bed, like a nice wooden bed, all kinds of stuff. Anyways, the point is- Some hangers. (laughs) The point is, oh, the hangers. We'll get there too. I listed all of this stuff for free thinking that when you list something for free especially if it's something that's like usable nice somebody will just immediately snatch it up well yeah when when we were in nashville i could even on our community page i would have stuff that i screwed up for the store like t-shirts uh koozies stuff like that yeti cups and i'd just put them out on the thing and say hey free come get them and they would be gone they'd be gone within the hour yeah so here the stuff sits on facebook marketplace which is fine. However, every single message I get is says... Is it still available? Is it still available? Is it still available? And I respond and I say, yes, it is. Would you like to come pick it up? <laughs> 99% of the time, they ghost me. I get no response. And I'm like, why did you even bother asking? Here's the other weird part. What? These people have the cojones, for lack of a better term, to ask you to deliver something that's, that's free. free like spearfish is 13 miles from our house and this lady wanted us to wanted alex to bring a cosmetic bag to wanted us to deliver them because no, she no, no, no it's worse than that it's worse than that oh so she asked me is it available i said yes so the one percent of people she said oh great i would like it can you deliver <laughs> 
And I said, no, ma'am, I'm sorry for a free item. I won't be able to deliver. And she said, okay, well, I'm in Sturgis. I don't have a, I think she said my tags are expired or I don't have tags on my vehicle. She said, can you meet me at the gas station? Did I say Sturgis or Spearfish? You said Sturgis, but yesterday you told me Spearfish. It was Spearfish. And I'm like, okay, number one, I think Spearfish has more than one gas station. So I don't know how you expect me to know which one you're talking about. Number two, I told you I'm not delivering this to Spearfish, but I tried to be nice and I said, hey, we're in Spearfish on Tuesdays for gymnastics. If you want me to put it in the car and bring it, I will and you can pick it up from the gymnastics academy. Okay, so I didn't really hear anything. And... I go to gymnastics with Ari the next Tuesday and then Wednesday she sends me a message and she says, Hey, can you deliver this? And I'm like, yo, did you not read my last message? I said, I'm in spearfish on Tuesday nights. If you want to come and pick this up, you can. However, I'm not delivering it. And she said, okay, that sounds good. Will you remind me? (laughs) No, no, ma'am. I will not remind you. For a free item, you will remind me how about. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about gymnastics. Okay. Let, well, let's talk about the kids' activities that we're doing right now. Okay, so Ari is in gymnastics on Tuesday evenings, and then both kids are in swimming lessons on Wednesdays. And I'm pretty sure I'm ready to pull them from both. Yeah. So I, I don't know what other people out there have experienced with a th- and now Brooks turned three last week. And Ari is two and a half. Yep. And they, we had to pull Brooks out of the pool the other day because he just wouldn't listen after like 15 minutes of the swimming lesson. Yeah, he didn't want to pay attention. He just wanted to go down the slide. He didn't want to. And I mean, granted, it was towards the end of the lesson. He's only three. His attention span is only so long. But we pulled him out of the pool kicking and screaming because he was not behaving. And, and he I- kicked and screamed. The entire time. Until we got home. Yeah. So I told the swim instructor, um, Miss Chelsea, I was like, I'm really sorry. You know, we just don't want to reward him with more pool time, with more fun slide if he's not behaving. And she, and I was really embarrassed. And she looked at me and she said, I wish more parents would behave that way, you know? Hmm. And so. I didn't know that. You didn't tell me that. So. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. She was like complimentary of how we were handling it, even though it was very embarrassing and. Oh gosh, it was too. But I mean, I'm not trying to reward him by letting him play and go down the slide when he is very badly misbehaved. It's not like a little bit was. Yeah, it was. It was kicking and screaming and it was a tantrum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was rough. But hold on. Okay. So we need to go back to this Facebook marketplace thing though. We're all over the place because we're going to talk about the hangers. Oh, Yep. So in our move. Hold we, on, folks. We acquired a whole bunch of extra like plastic hangers that we're not using. And so we're just trying to make space for ourselves. And so we have this big whole box of plastic hangers that we're not planning on using. So again, we list it free on Facebook Marketplace. And this woman messages me and she's like, hey, I would like these. We just moved to town. Can I come pick them up? And we were like, yeah, you can. And she was like, well, my husband works in the town you live. He get, He's a server, I think. Yeah, server at a restaurant. Yeah, and he gets off at like 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. She's like, would that be too late? And I'm like, no, we'll just set them outside. You we have know? a big, we have a couple of big rocks outside of our, our property, and we're just going to And like set a big them. driveway. Yeah, we're just going to set them. There. Yeah, I'm like, it's free. You know, just have them swing by, pick it up, whatever. And I gave her the address. Well, about one in the morning, Brooks wakes up because he hasn't been sleeping well. And so I go tend to him and then I come back to my phone and realize there's a message from this woman saying that our neighbor had just fired shots at her husband picking up these hangers. And we're like, what, 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 what? Yeah, I didn't know if they were on base. I didn't know which neighbor it was. I didn't even know maybe he had driven into the wrong neighborhood. We had no idea. It was one in the morning. We didn't know if we were dreaming. Yeah. And so we gathered more information from her and learned that it was our neighbor across the street who has kind of a back entrance to their home right across the street from where we live. Keep in mind, they keep, our, the, the, he owns a construction company and keeps some of his like trailers and stuff over there. And our roads are kind of curvy and our neighborhood is not like typical neighborhood. It's dark, like really, like there's not street signs. There's only like 25 like houses in this area. And it's like, it's like a hill. Yeah. So it's really windy. So apparently homeboy server 
pulled into the wrong house. So he pulled into the back side of our neighbor's house and got out of his vehicle and started shining his flashlight around. looking for a house number. Yeah. And so the neighbor, apparently, that was like right at their walkout basement where his kids happened to be sleeping, like teenage daughters. Mm -hmm. And so our neighbor came out with a shotgun and fired a warning shot and then told him he had 30 seconds to leave or he'd fill him full of lead. Yeah. Fast forward to the next day, Alex and I were going to, I think we were going to pick up the kids from daycare. Mm -hmm. And... We've never met this guy before. Mm -mm. and we Never are, even seen him. No, we're backing out of the driveway, and he's backing one of his trailers into his area there, and he has somebody take over for him, and he gets out, and he walks across the road to, to talk to us. He's like, do y'all have any problems over there last night? And we're like, no, we didn't, but we heard that uh, somebody like picking up a free item from Facebook from us uh, got shot at, and he's like, yeah. I did. I He came in my yard at like one in the morning or something to that effect. And I was like, did you fire a shot at him? He goes, hell yeah, I did. And I'm like, what? Uh, what? And the crazy thing is, is that we have Airbnbs here and... In the neighborhood. Yeah, in the neighborhood. So there's different people here all the time. Not a lot of different houses or Airbnbs, but some people choose to use their their homes as Airbnbs. And there are bound to be people driving around in the middle of the night getting lost. And probably this is not the first time, you know, somebody's been pulled into the wrong driveway right. late at night. Somebody gets into town late or, or something like that. I mean... you Okay, listen. I am all for protecting your home, protecting your family. If somebody's trying to break in, like I believe right. in responsible gun, gun ownership, ownership. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we have guns. I feel that we are very, we have to be responsible because we have to prove to foster care that they're like double locked and yeah. whatever. Even if we didn't, we have small kids. So we are very careful. In a safe on a shelf, like eight foot high. Yeah. However, if you are not 100% positive that this stranger is like guilty or ill-intentioned or whatever, you better not fire a warning shot in my neighborhood. Mm. I just read a story the other day about somebody who was like in a metropolitan area on New Year's Eve and somebody fired a shot up like in celebration and it came back down and it hit her in the head Jeez. and it lodged in her skull. That's you nuts. do not fire a warning I don't think you should fire a warning shot, period, for any reason. Yeah. If you are protecting your home, protecting your family against somebody who's coming in and trying to hurt you, no warning shot is necessary. Yep, right. So that was very interesting. I think we need to take a two-minute break because we have a crying child. Hashtag parent life, and we will be right back with you. And we're back. We're back. Just had to do a little poop cleaning. Poop scooping. Poop scooping boogie. I feel like my whole life is cleaning up poop. pee and poop. Yeah. We are potty training. Plus dogs and cats. Our dogs and cats have not successfully been potty training well. <laughs> but the kids have been doing pretty good, I would say. Yeah. Speaking of poop. <laughs> yes. Might not. This isn't necessarily a parents thing or a foster care thing but i feel like most things we talk about these days are not yeah you're probably right so alex got a new toilet the other day oh for yes, our bedroom. i did this has kind of got me all sorts of weirded it's got you weirded why um it's not tomorrow it's bidet what? <laughs> that was the worst joke I've ever heard. So Alex got a toilet with a damn bidet in it. Yeah. Okay. So here's my thing. When we're buying something new, I really put a lot of research and thought into the best option. Mm, you do. You know, I'm kind of cheap, so I don't want to spend a lot of money, but I also want to get the best value for my dollar, right? So I ended up buying a toilet that comes with a bidet lid. <laughs> and I've been reluctant to try it. So, well, okay, I need to talk about my thought process for a second. Okay. 
Number one, I've never had a bidet. I've never tried one. However, with us... Just thought I'd buy one. Well, with us, you know, dabbling in international home ownership and (laughs) thinking further about like transnational education programs for our children and we'll get into that so now that we are dabbling in international home ownership and transnational education programs possibly for our children which we'll get to maybe not this episode but another (laughs) It is very internationally accepted. I think especially in France and Italy, I think I read 97% of Italian households have a bidet. I just figured why not give it a shot? Like if it's this big of a deal, how can I live my adult life never having tried it? Hmm. So I found one that was very cheap. It's manual. It's not like it doesn't plug into the wall and it literally just sprays water at your butthole <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm 12 so tell me your experience because you just used it for the fr- we've had it for like three or four days i know and i told you i'm like i don't i don't get it i just don't get it what do you mean what what don't you get so it, it's like this is ridiculous conversation but like you wipe, right? Wait, are we talking about... Okay, listen. We need to back it up a step because females usually wipe... Right. ...with a number one or with a number two. So Correct. you're talking about just number twos, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So okay. Uh, my thought process was, okay, you wash your butt, and then what? You can't pull up your britches. You're going to have soggy mess in your, in your underwear. I think you dry it then with toilet paper after you wash, Okay, right? so you've already used some toilet paper. Why wouldn't you just continue to use... Yeah. Because... That was, that, and I, I get it, but that's what I was thinking. Right, but then, okay, so we had the conversation too of like, if there is poop on my countertop, would I rather clean it up with a dry paper towel or spray it with water and a paper towel? If those are my two options. Yeah. I choose number two. I choose ha, cake. Ha, 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 ha. Right? I choose cake. So I think that's the idea. I don't know. Yeah. How does it make you feel? Did you like it? Uh, I don't know. I don't do know. Mean? It's weird. In what way is it weird? Uh, It's really cold because we just have cold water over there. It is cold. Okay, so the and other And the sensation one? is odd. <laughs> The other model that I was looking at, you do plug it in and it has a seat heater, a light, and an electric bidet that will control the temperature as well. So Mm. when we build a house, we're going to make sure to put an outlet near the toilet. So for those of you who have considered building a house, outlets near the toilet. I literally would have never thought of that. Never. Okay, in true barely braided fashion, what are you drinking tonight? Mm, Evan Williams. How bottled is it? in bond. It's good. What does bottled in bond mean? Um, it is it's got to be bottled at 100 proof. It's got to be aged at least 4 years and it's got to be all from the same bottling season. Oh. Okay. It's a government rule. But this is a, it's an Evan Williams. So Evan Williams is part of the Heaven Hill family. Mm-hmm. And guess what else came from Heaven Hill? Quality House. Yeah. There's some distinct similarities to, to the two. When was the last time you had some Quality House? I have no idea. Really? Probably the, the last ones I took from the shelves of Frugal McDougal. Oh, man. I wonder if you could find it here. I don't think so. Speaking of whiskey, our West River whiskey has been flying. Yeah, it's been very successful. We've been pretty blessed with it for sure. Yes. So we have a special single barrel edition coming out for rally this year. Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. Yes. So it's like, what, 200 bottles? Somewhere between 200 and 250. I, I mean, think he if said I the, had to guess, the higher 230. Proof, the higher proof 
produces less bottles. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. So because when you proof something down, say you go from 120 proof down to 96 proof, basically you're adding water, raw water, to the product to lighten it up. Okay. And this year we're going to do a 96 proof bourbon. Yep. Just for the single, the single edition. barrel for rally. Yep. And it's got its own special label that we designed. And it's also going to have a bottle accessory, which is a leather strap attached to a genuine deer antler. And they're made locally in yeah. Custer, South Dakota. So we're actually going to go down tomorrow and get them. We're going to pick them up. And uh, I, for those that have never explored South Dakota, which I'm really one of those, the Custer State Park is the second largest state park in the country behind the Adirondacks. And Really? How yeah, do you know this? Well, I learned it yesterday, frankly. From um, a firefighter? No, no, from uh, a customer, actually. Really? Yeah, customer from New York that knew about the Adirondacks. Gotcha. Um, they make nice chairs, I hear. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, so tomorrow we get to go to Custer, which I've never been. And Custer is this, this huge park, and they have so many bison and wildlife on on this state park. So they have, a I think, a loop you can drive in your car, and like bison will just walk up to your windows. It's it's supposed to be uh, really cool, and I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. I enjoy... I'm kind of nervous. Bison Why? are mean. They can get mean. Didn't you see that video that I sent you where the one bison... Like a cr- head- one across the road and yeah. just smoked to the other one. Yeah, yeah I saw head that. Butted that guy across the road. Well, and if you go to westriverwhiskeyco.com, you can also see our sweatshirts and t-shirts and stuff that say "Don't feed the fluffy cows," which has been like our biggest seller when it comes to apparel. Because some woman a couple years ago got too close, and the bison grabbed her by the jeans and flung her. And then the jeans, I think, stayed. stayed on his antler or his horn. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to wear my helmet when we go tomorrow. What? My helmet. I don't want to get flung by a bison. What if it headbutts our car? Oh, boy. Um, They're mean. They're scary. Also, so are you, but I mean. <laughs> is bear country in Custer as well? Where's bear country? I think it's pretty close. It's over by Rapid. I would like to go to bear country because I feel We need to like spread this out though, babe. I have a whole list of things to do. I feel like a bear could not get in our vehicle. What? Do you think a bear could get in our vehicle? Yes. How? We're keeping the windows up, obviously. Sure, but they could... Haven't you ever watched Boo Boo and Yogi and the picnic... Like, they get in the picnic baskets and whatnot? (laughs) What? Never mind. No. No? I have not. I'm not really sure what you're talking about. So... I feel like our whole theme here is we've just become really redneck. Oh, well, I can add to that. <laughs> what do you mean? I bought a four wheeler last week. And it's we camo. bought a four, yeah. We bought a camouflage four wheeler last I week. I didn't do any of the buying. Well, your money did. <laughs> I drove it. Yeah, we had fun. Yeah, that first it day. is. It. It's really fun. I do enjoy it. I like it a lot. But I will say we have. This place has brought out the redneck in us for sure. Hmm. Like, I no longer feel like a city girl. Yeah. And my uncle gave me a musket, a 50 caliber musket the other day. I don't even know what that means. It's a gun. What does it do? Uh, it's, Better not shoot warning shots. No. <laughs> it's like a colonial style flintlock gun that... Does it work? Uh, Yes, it does because he won the Minnesota State uh muzzle loader shoot with it years ago. You should bring it to bison country with us. No. <laughs> it's actually uh he gave it to me thinking that it would be a cool piece of decor uh at the store. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, and that would be really cool. He said to get some hooves. What do you mean? So evidently they make like real deer hooves. They, they make them? I think they grow them. Well, the, you, correct. Sorry. But then they curve them <laughs> uh-huh. and they like mount them on wood so you can hang guns on them. That is so redneck. Yeah. It was a little strange, but uh, we'll honor his wishes maybe. 
that was his wish for us to hang it that <laughs> particular way. He was he was pretty adamant that uh, mm-hmm. I I order some antelope or deer antler or deer hooves. You know, tomorrow in Custer, when we pick up our antler accessories, I bet I they bet he's got a set sitting there. <laughs> probably, he's also probably Corliss's cousin. <laughs> We'll have to see. We'll, uh, we'll post a follow-up. getting sidetracked. We've um, also had the conversation, too, like, is South Dakota more redneck or is Tennessee more redneck? And I say the jury's still out. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. I, you know, we'd have to be... I mean, this is a... We live in a town of, what, I think it's 1,270 people, Deadwood is. I think that's what the sign says down yeah. by the... The sign says 1,273. And then the other sign on the other side of town says like 1369 hmm well so although it's a very very small town population wise we've got what a dozen casinos i mean the fact that this is such a tourist (laughs) town right makes a big difference but okay let's assign some points so where do you see more cowboy hats here by far Agreed. But do I don't know if they're South Dakotans. But we it doesn't get, matter. Right, but we get a ton of, of cowboys from Wyoming, and they're the real deal Holyfield. Okay. So more cowboy hats, South Dakota. How about more pickup trucks? Here. More tractors? Mm, good question, because we're, I mean, we're kind of in an urban area. Okay. How about... Where's... I mean, let me just tell you that I followed a beef truck yesterday. Uh, <laughs> a beef truck? I followed a semi loaded with cows that was spilling cow, 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 that was spilling poop all over the. F- I mean, like li- liquid. Po- it smelled so bad, and he left a stripe from the police station all the way out to out by the hardware store. A poop stripe. Yeah. Why was it leaking? They couldn't all be pooping at the same time. Well, there's you know there's probably fifty to seventy five head of cattle in there. And and the poop just flows? Yeah. Oh my gosh, isn't there some sort of solution for this? I don't know. A beef truck. When you said beef truck, I was thinking like the Schwann's man. <laughs> 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 you meant like uh, legit cows, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's really weird. Um, also, red beer. Yeah, that's a thing. Somebody please explain to me what the appeal of red beer is. Let's take some perfectly good beer and throw some mater juice in it. I mean, depending on the type of beer, it may or may not be perfectly good. Ugh, pass. So, is red beer, it's just beer and tomato juice, right? And well, like maybe a clamato, if, I think they call it. Maybe a pickle if you're feeling fancy. Yeah, or, or olives. Okay. The other thing, there are so many dang women wearing bell-bottom pants. Yeah, that has been noticed. Like, go home in your bell-bottom pants. They're not flattering at all. I don't like them. I don't get it. I don't like it. You know what else was so weird? We went to a concert a couple weeks ago, and it was at the Monument in Rapid City. They have this loft area called Altitude, right? Called Altitude? Yeah. And you buy tickets, which include free dinner and all you can drink. And we're like, sign us up, buddy. So we did that, and it was really cool, and it was good. However, I had one really weird experience while we were there. Do I know this? Yeah, I told you at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, like, now. imagine me going out in Nashville on Broadway or, like, even at... Silverado's, which was like our very favorite place to go. I think it would be pretty common by like 10, 11 o'clock at night. When you go in the women's bathroom, you expect chaos. There is always some chick in there crying. There's some chick in there puking. And then there's a bunch of other chicks like fixing each other's bras and making friends, exchanging phone numbers, whatever. Exchanging bras. Whatever it is. <laughs> there is always craziness happening in the women's bathroom past like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, right? So we're at this concert in this area where they serve you literally free drinks, as many as you want. And it gets to be... 10 30 11 maybe even 11 30 like it was like almost towards the end of the concert and i'm like i need to pee 
I'm about to enter the women's bathroom. I know that chaos will ensue. This is always one of my very favorite things to do and see what's happening in the bathroom. Maybe make You're a new weird. friend. So I open the door to the bathroom. There's a line of about 10 women. Literally every single one is standing there silently. It is the most awkward <laughs> drunk moment of my entire life. Like why was you nobody talking drunk, to each other? I, I mean, I wasn't drunk drunk, but I was like ready drunk, to have drunk. a good time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like ready to tell some girls how much I like their outfits or, you know, whatever, bash on their boyfriend with them. It doesn't matter. Hmm. But no, every single one of them was dead. Crickets. Silent. Why? Hmm. Weird. What's the so, men's bathroom like? Sorry to interrupt you. What's some, is it quiet? It was quiet. Yeah, it was quiet. There's only a couple stalls in there and a couple to- uh, urinals. So yeah, it was quiet. I'm never going to get over that. Sorry. What were you going to say? Update on Ari. Yeah, let's do that quick because here's the thing. I don't want to like, I just worry about sharing too much as we're so close to the end of her case, but it would be nice to kind of like share how the process is going for others who may like yeah. enter the same sort of process. So go for it. What's going on? Um. So the rights have been terminated and the appeal period has passed. And there was no appeal made. Mm-hmm. And so now they have us doing preliminary conversations with caseworker from a third party adoption agency. She's I think she's called an adoption specialist. Yeah. With Har is it Harmony? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she has scheduled a full disclosure meeting and I asked her, like, what is that? And she was like if you've had this girl for her entire life and you, you know, know that much about her, this really isn't going to be news to you. But basically, we find we out to, like yeah. medical records. I don't know. I, I will let you know what we find out, but we will do it remotely. And then apparently after that, as soon as that's done, we can file the petition to adopt. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Yeah, I think that's right. But it sounds like that may happen in August or September. Okay. Do you want to know something that's very weird? I don't know if I talked about this in the podcast before, but one time I hired a psychic. Oh, boy. <laughs> and she did a reading for you, right? Was it you or for yeah, my Yeah, and mom? she said it was going to be September. No, no, but, no, 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 no. But. Your reading was different. Didn't you have a reading? Or what, did I buy one for my mom? It, it was for me. So... <laughs> You're telling the story way out of whack. I hired the psychic for you or for my mom first? You actually did me first and then your mom. Because your mom, I had mine scheduled for when your mom and Tom were there. And so we all sat in the living room and and listened together on speakerphone. That's right. But then I paid for her to do a reading for me, for myself. Hmm. Okay. And then when she did that, that's when she told us that we would be finalizing the adoption in September. Yeah, this but she said September over, of two years ago. No, she didn't. She didn't say which year. This was like a year and a half ago. I think we need to go through the other podcast because I think we talked about this and she said a year. No, she didn't. Okay. So she said that it was going to happen. We were going to finalize the adoption in September. We had this call with her like a year and a half ago. So we just assumed it was going to be the September of that year we were in, 2021. Fair enough. And September passed and we didn't adopt, obviously, yet. And so we were kind of like, well, she must be BS, you know, because September is very specific. You know what I mean? And then she ended up passing away. I think she had medical complications, Hmm. but now the chance of us adopting this September are, it's possible. Mm -hmm. So if that ends, I'm not going to push for one date over another. I'm just going to let them assign us a date. And if it happens to be in September, my mind is going to be blown. One thing we've really come to not believe, but we've really started to understand or realize that we no longer we used to live and die by timelines that this has to get done on this time and this time and now that her parents or biological parents rights have been terminated 
we don't feel like there has to be that timeline anymore. It's like we're in South Dakota. She's, She's not, not going, going anywhere. anywhere. Yeah, we're more so zen. We're, well, you are. I'm not. But yeah, it's it's these court proceedings and these you know these other things with DCS are more stomachable, I guess, because we know she's not going anywhere, right? And up until that time that the judge slams the gavel and says there's 30 days, up until that 30 days is up, you know, things could change. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, like, it's a rare occurrence, but it's a possibility. Sure. People come out of the woodwork all the time. Mm-hmm. And now we know that that's not going to happen. So... We, the court knows that we are the very best case situation for her permanency. Yeah. You know, something you said kind of like sparked a thought. And I know we did like a whole episode on race, but I was just like doing a little bit of reading the other day. And I learned, we knew that there were people who were never going to be okay with a white family adopting a black child. However... There is a very large group of people who believe that a white family adopting a black child is not okay in any circumstances ever. Did you know that? No. Yeah, like there is a very large group of people who it doesn't matter what her circumstances are at home, like with her biological family, it doesn't matter what our circumstances are, how versed we are in her culture, whatever it may be. So is it mostly people from her culture or? Yes. Hmm. It is believed that we will never under any circumstances measure up to her living in a black family. But, and you know, this argument comes up where people will say, okay, well, what's the alternative? And their answer a lot of times from what I've seen is we need to fix the system and offer biological parents the same support that foster parents are offered. So there's this whole argument on who gets more resources, who gets more support. Well, that's weird because I was never offered counseling of any sorts for when we took Ari in. I was never offered parenting classes when Ari came to, into our lives. As a foster parent, I believe that biological families have plenty of resources I believe available they have exponentially... Should they choose to take advantage of them. Correct. And I agree with that, but some people don't. Hmm. Well, so, they obviously... Coming, coming they from might a foster not. parent who has experienced the benefits and or lack of benefits that we get for right. her. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't know. The whole thing is really interesting. Also, um, like kind of speaking of culture and like ensuring our children are immersed in different cultures, we actually talked about maybe living a portion of each year down in Mexico with them. Um, hmm. I don't know if it'll ever happen right now. It's kind of like a pipe dream, but you know, that we're kind of in the business of making dreams come true, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Hmm. there's this prestigious school called the green school opening in Tulum. There are only in the same neighborhood where we're purchasing a condo and it's a very good school. I believe they will teach English and Spanish. And I just think it would be really cool if the kids could be immersed in that for a few months of every year. Like how good would that be for them and how good would it be for them to have parents who are so zen and relaxed that they sit on the beach for three months out of the year (laughs) Mm. talk about zen mornings joel um we're trying to have zen mornings as alex calls them (laughs) just trying to have chill mornings i don't know it just seems to be kind of chaotic in here getting the kids up and ready for school because lately they've been getting up early late early late 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 early it's it's just you can't tell when they're going to get up anymore it used to be like clockwork yeah sometimes we're not sometimes they need baths sometimes they'll eat sometimes they scream and have a tantrum sometimes they wake up on the right side of the bed and sometimes they don't mama i pooped mama i pooped so zen mornings is our attempt to just chill out Yeah, like everybody chill, just have a nice, calm morning where everybody is like happy and calm and 
Zen mornings and it doesn't work very well yet, but we're getting better. Do you think? Yeah. I hope so because it is so, I'm learning in my old age. I really. The old age of 34. I really just need more Zen in my life. I need more calm. I need more like mental, just mental calm. I'm almost 42. What do you think I feel like? I don't I feel like my mental health has deteriorated, de- deteriorated, <laughs> deter- deteriorated, deteriorated, as you can tell. I think um, you need to go I've sit. I've been drinking this vodka. I think you need to go sit with uh, Grandma Vicky and uh, work on your speech pathology or your niece, either. I know. I probably do. But like, as I get older, I put more and more effort into maintaining my mental health for example seeing a therapist meditating implementing things like zen mornings working out several times per week and it just feels like it takes more and more work we just have a lot going on mentally healthy and i thought moving here would be like oh it won't be as wild but it's it's still really busy and we still have a million things to remember so therefore, we will move to Mexico for three months out of the year and spend those three months on the beach while while our children go to a very prestigious school. Well, what do you? You have to work. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll t- my work really isn't all that stressful. Um, and maybe I'll just like take a couple days off, a couple months off. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. We'll make it happen. We'll make it work. Whatever you say. All right. What else we have? Anything? Hmm. I got nothing. Hey, um, shout out to the girl in Mitchell that's going to watch Brooks. Oh, heck yeah. Uh, what is it? July 18th? Um, yeah. One of the days in July, I reached out on Facebook to my friends to see if anybody knew of a like drop-in babysitter or something. And one of my friends from high school, her name is Amy, she recommended this girl who her kids go to. And so I reached out and she was like, yeah, um, I'll watch him. And she was like, actually, I'm a fan of your podcast and we're also foster parents. And That's I was wild, like, huh? What? What, what a small world. Yeah. What? Maybe she can help me practice Zen mornings with Brooksy Boy. Maybe. Also, he tells everybody, my name is Tatos. <laughs> yeah. My name is Tatos. He went to he went to the doctor the other day and and uh there's me and him in the waiting room and then this older fellow walks in and he just walks up to the guy and he's like, My name's Tatos and he kinda like shakes his head a little bit and the guy looks at him and he's like mm, Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Joel got it on video, and you can tell the guy's like, mm, don't know about that kid, maybe something well, wrong ton- in there. Well, tonight at the park, the girl that you used to be a dancer with, she's like, w- what is his name? I said, it's Brooks. She's like, oh, he just told me his name was Tatos. <laughs> <laughs> or like the guy when we were on our last flight with them, and um, yeah. that we sat separately, and you sat with Brooks, and then the guy that was sitting next to you guys Tito. comes up to me, and he goes, man, your son, Tito, is just a really spectacular kid. And I'm like, what? Who's Tito? I had no idea what this guy was talking about. He's like, you know, your son, Tito. And I'm like, I don't that got nothing for you. <laughs> so, all right, well... Um, I think it's my time to have Zen nighttime. I've got a chili pad. Um, I have a bed jet. Yeah, we have all of the sleeping devices. So if you have trouble sleeping, shout out to us on our next episode. We will go over our entire nighttime routine. For If anybody sleep. has any questions for the next episode, shoot us a DM on Instagram. Heck yeah. At Barely Braided Podcast. Well, so I think I'm going to retire at Barely Braided Podcast on Instagram just because I oh. don't really use it very much. And I just use my personal Instagram. There's just too much to keep up with. So Ten I four. think you should, if you have questions, send them to me. I'm going to delete Barely Braided Podcast on Instagram. Just hit me up at 2TrackMind. 
don't too really spelled want to out. Spell it out. It feels like T W O T R A C K M I N D. Yeah, but there's also underscores. In oh. Two. Okay. We're doing this. At T W O underscore track T R A C K underscore mind M I N D. That's a lot. I need to change my Instagram name. Again. It doesn't feel zen to me. <laughs> okay. Good night, y'all. All right. Good night, and we will see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.